What do we have for Sag? Six of Cups, Scorpio Energy at the foundation of the reading, Sag. Right now, we're experiencing quite a lot of retrogrades. And the focus, or the emphasis rather, seems to be on addressing things that we need to release or let go of in order to step into this new season, into this new chapter, into this new timeline. Or for some of you, this could be what is required for some sort of move to get underway, some sort of project to come to completion. It's going to be relatively different for all of you out there. But with the Six of Cups coming out in reverse, it's really telling us here that there's some sort of energy that is trying to get you to stay stuck in the past. It's an energy that wants you to think that you have some sort of unrealistic expectations on the path that you are currently trying to navigate. And I feel that what the universe is requiring of you right now, Sag, is to finally address this. Because it, it seems to me that you are at a standstill until you do. You've put all the work in, whatever that may look like for you. But now, whatever this is here that we're picking up on needs to be addressed and sorted out once and for all. This could very well be people that you have in your environment, a kind of negative influence that is just kind of stuck living in the past. It's an energy that refuses to grow up and move forward, right? I think I was just speaking about this energy in the collective reading I just put out, right? It's people that are always talking about what they used to do. There's no emphasis on the path ahead. It's just an energy of focusing on what once was. And I feel for the Sag Collective, or whoever may be watching this, you don't have to be a Sag. If it resonates, it resonates. You are in this very powerful position where you're staring down the passageway of your new beginning and feeling the weight of the past trying to hold you back. For a lot of you, you've never even seen it from this kind of perspective or vantage point before. Right? It's like as soon as you up-level, as soon as you cross a certain benchmark, all of a sudden you start to feel tremendous restriction. And this is again, been in the collective energy, right? It's like you start putting all this work in towards something and you see how your environment, the people in it, reacting in a very unfavorable, very negative kind of way to your growth. You know, the Six of Cups in reverse to me is a kind of bad dream, right? It's like that bad dream of being trapped inside some haunted house where there's children's rhymes playing, right? Just echoing around. That's how I see this energy. And you know, when you move on from these kinds of cycles, depending really on what it is, you sometimes take on this kind of perspective. You look back on these cycles that you've moved on from or you're trying to move on from as a kind of nightmare, a kind of hell that you didn't really recognize until you tried to up-level. You know, there's been a huge emphasis on karmic cycles inside the collective energies recently. And for those of you who don't know, karmic cycles are just any sort of patterns, belief systems, behaviors that create some sort of cyclical motion in our life. Some can be favorable and some not so favorable, but they're usually highlighting the ones that are very difficult to move on from, the ones that don't allow for any sort of growth. And this is what we're really seeing right now. I do feel that in the coming months, a lot of you are going to see tremendous growth in your life, but it's going to be a result of what you are focusing on releasing in the here and now. What do we have the sacred, please? Hold on, Sag. We have the Five of Pentacles here on the floor. Five of Pentacles, Taurus energy at the sacral. So this really speaks about what I said in regards to a kind of haunted house, right? It's like here you are. It's like you're clutching on to this kind of inner child and you're stuck in this kind of cyclical cycle. And this can represent many things. But overall, the Five of Pentacles in a reading like this is really speaking about a kind of lack mindset or a limited mindset, right? And this can really suggest that in order to have this breakthrough, you need to set the benchmark higher, 
right? This is always going to be the necessary action, right? It's like you need to set your standards higher. You need to really shoot for the stars here. And this is coming out right at the sacral. So this could have to do with some sort of creative passion that a lot of you guys have or just a direction that you want to move in general. It could be some sort of vision that you have for your life moving forward. But in order to pull this off, there has to be some sort of sacrifices that are made in the here and now. And sacrificing things that are not in alignment with our highest good is always going to be a necessary component to get the breakthrough. And there's this kind of higher perspective that I feel the universe, the divine, is trying to position you in right now to be able to see these things clearly, right? It's like zooming out of your life in the here and now and just looking at things like you're not you, like you're looking at your life through the eyes of the universe. So you can really focus in on what's most important, right? We probably couldn't get two better cards than the six of cups in reverse, followed by the five of pentacles to describe some sort of cyclical pattern or karmic cycle that you need to break in your life to have this level up. Now, again, this can represent many things, behavioral patterns, addictions, people, places, mindsets is always going to be a big one. In fact, I would go as far as saying that a mindset is going to go hand in hand with one of those other things I mentioned. What do we have? The solar plexus. Ace of swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy at the solar plexus. A mindset is exactly right. You see, Ace of Swords is all about mental strength. It's an energy of mental clarity. And this is also highlighting what I said in regards to looking at your life from a higher vantage point, a universal perspective, so to speak, as a means to get this breakthrough. We get so consumed with the here and now, with the everyday grind of life. Sometimes we lose focus of what's truly important, especially this day and age. We're being bombarded with so much distraction, so much chaos and noise that it's very difficult to get a clear thought for any extended period of time. Just when you feel like you figured something out, it could be the next day you feel your energy dragging again. It's so up and down. And if you do feel that way, which I'm sure a lot of you do, I don't think there's anybody who doesn't feel that way right now, just know that you're not alone there. It's a collective thing. Usually it's going to have a lot to do with the astrology. I mean, even right now we have this full moon, which is really calling for you to reflect on the past, to know what you want in the present and create for the future. You see, when you're present in the here and now and taking responsibility with what you're being faced with, you're also constructing the future. But if you're trapped in the past, like these energies want you to be, and you're not present in the here and now, it's almost as if you cease to exist. You're not present in your own life. I just heard something about an existential crisis, right? It's like you can't get a firm grip on the reality of your situation when you're constantly being pulled back into the past. So deal with what needs to be dealt with there so you can take control of the here and now and create the future that you desire for yourself. Ace of Swords at the solar plexus. Solar plexus is all related to you really taking control, stepping into your personal power. I just heard leave no stone unturned. There's an emphasis here. Okay, I just heard details. You know, Sag, I just really feel like you're being called here to clean house, it's a clean shop, readdress the way you're doing some things. It's like an energy that wants to improve upon some sort of approach. Also, there's been a lot of emphasis in the readings lately surrounding what a lot of you are listening to, what a lot of you are inputting into your minds. This is incredibly important. I mean, this is always important. But especially now, because I feel that with this breakthrough on the horizon line, it's as if you need to flood your life with as much positivity as possible, right? You really need to focus on what feeds you spiritually and what doesn't. Be ruthless here as well, Sag, okay? Don't give anything, anyone a pass here. Yeah, I just heard, think from a space of having no gray areas, right? It either is or it isn't. Very polarized way of thinking right now is really going to benefit you. It's like you need to be really strict with your energy is what I'm getting here. 
What do we have at the heart, please? Page of Cups, Cancer Scorpio Pisces energy at the heart. You know, this Page of Cups from this deck is really interesting because the illustration is really speaking to me right now. It's like here, well, the Page of Cups represents new beginnings, right? But as we can see here, it's like this bird has just dropped this fish into your cup, which suggests that it's uh, it just sort of stifling or tainting a new beginning, right? Which further emphasizes what I said in regards to cleaning shop, cleaning house, right? If it's not nourishing your soul, it's got to go. There's something here. You know, I feel for a lot of you, this could just be some sort of negative influence you have around you. Page of Cups can really speak about individuals who are just no longer in resonance with you. It's like you're in the process of up-leveling, which can just be another way of speaking about you raising your vibration. And you still have an influence around you. Again, whether it's literally around you or whether it's something you listen to, that just doesn't speak to you anymore. It's like you've outgrown whatever this is here. Or maybe you just see someone or hear something in a way that you didn't before. You know, there's very much an energy in the collective as well right now about us really seeing things in a way that we hadn't seen them before. This is usually going to be one of the steps we take before we have a breakthrough. You know, there's been um, some themes inside the collective recently as well about all of us understanding that we very much keep certain people in power because we listen to them, because we give them an audience. And this is actually not healthy for us because it's a kind of enabling, right? You know, one of the messages I got before this reading was, there is only one person more dangerous than a person who speaks the word of God and moves like the devil. And that is the person who follows them because they keep that person in business. Now, I feel that there's a whole bunch of you out there that needed to hear that, okay? And that can show up on many different levels, but I won't try and dig too much into that particular download that I got. I'll just leave all that with you, and you can apply it where you see fit. What do we have at the throat? The sun, Leo energy at the throat. And this is speaking about this breakthrough that's on the horizon line, Sag, okay? The sun is the most high vibrational card in the tarot. This is also highlighting what I said about your vibration going up. You're up leveling, right? You're no longer in resonance with some certain energies here. This is confirming to us that something needs to be let go of, right? It's, oh, I just heard muddying up the waters, right? Dirtying up the waters. I also just heard it's poisoning the supply. You know, this can really speak about some of you trying to have a breakthrough, putting all your effort into it, but trying to take along somebody who isn't meant to be on this path with you, or it could speak about a behavioral pattern that you need to address in order to finally break through to the other side. You place that as it fits, but you're so close here, Sag. This sun really is showing up as like the light at the end of the tunnel as well. It's like you can see it. It's only a matter of time now is what I just heard. I feel that during these retrogrades, whatever this is, is going to be clearly illuminated to you. For a lot of you, it's already been illuminated, but you're just trying to sort out how to break free of this energy. Sometimes this can take time, depending on what you're dealing with. It's typically never easy. Usually when you get to the other side and you've moved on from it, you look back and you start to recognize that, uh, I didn't need to make that as hard as I did, but that's really just life. 
right? It's difficult to see what we're dealing with when we're in the throes of it. It takes moving on from it to start to see things from outside the fishbowl, so to speak. But I also feel that for those of you that are still dealing with this, this sun is showing up to confirm to you that you're getting close, that all of this is most certainly for something, not to give up now. You know, what I've learned is that when it comes to having these level ups and these breakthroughs in our life, the most crucial time, the time when we should be on high alert is when we're in that 11th hour, right? Because that's when the energies, whatever that may be for all of you, go all in with everything they have. You know, when I look back over my life before I became aware of this and I went through my own awakenings, it's very easy to see when I came face to face with these energies without even knowing it. Can't tell you how many times I gave up on something in the 11th hour. I got to a point where it just happened so many times, decade after decade, I truly thought that there was either something wrong with me, I was cursed, that the universe had forgotten about me, that I was insignificant, all these things. But the one thing that I wasn't looking at was my environment, the people in it, the behavioral patterns. It was all of these things that accumulated together to cause me to self-sabotage in the 11th hour. It took addressing the behavioral patterns that I was engaged in at that point in my life and also getting away from just about everybody so I can see what I was dealing with before I had the breakthrough. And then when I finally had the breakthrough, it blew my mind. I couldn't believe it because it was in the throes of that breakthrough that I'd start to see what was clearly holding me back, and it was shocking. That exposure is really what triggers the awakening in your life, and this is exactly what I'm getting here for you, Sag, and you know, some of you may have already gone through this and you're preparing to go through it again, right? There's levels to this. We're always going through some sort of awakening in our life, always. It's perpetual. As children of the universe, which, as we know, is constantly expanding, we too need to be constantly evolving in our own lives to stay in flow with the divine's will for our life. When you start to figure this out, when you start to move with the energies and the flow of life, this is when you start to feel less and less resistance. This is when you start to feel like things are going your way. And I'm telling you, this perspective shift that I always speak about in my readings, right? About when you feel stuck, just shifting your vantage point into the eyes of the universe, into the eyes of God, and then ask, how would you move if you are having a conversation with God, with the universe, with the divine in that moment? What would they tell you? You'd be surprised at how far you can truly get in your life if you can take on this practice. Because not only is it humbling, but it allows you to really focus in on what truly matters. You know, there's so much noise and chaos in the everyday grind of life that we don't realize that a lot of this stuff is so insignificant to the grand scheme of things. We also start to realize that a lot of this stuff has been strategically placed on our path to keep us distracted from the true meaning of our life's path, our life's mission. And when you start to realize this, this is when you start to realize, to see the duality in this three-dimensional density that we live in. Yes, the universe is all one, but the three-dimensional density is without a doubt divided into two polarities. We have support, we have resistance, we have God, we have the devil, we have high vibe, we have low vibe. There's so many different ways of compartmentalizing this. But the sooner that you stop fighting this and accepting the way our particular three-dimensional density has been constructed and seeing it for what it is, the further you will start to get, you will be able to ride these energetic waves into success, victory, and evolution. And I have the Ten of Swords on the bottom of the deck, Gemini Energy. So this is speaking to me about some sort of liberating energy coming through. It's the energy of a new start. It's as if you start to understand everything we're channeling through for you here, Sag, and you start moving with this sort of mindset and you start to see the breakthroughs. See, a lot of the things that are holding us back, if not all of the things that are holding us back, can be resolved with a mindset shift. 
And I remember hearing this when I was uh, really young, right? Oh, uh, you need to change your mindset. I had no idea what that meant or how I went about doing it. And certainly no one even tried to explain it to me or show me how I did it. I just had to find out myself with a little bit of life experience. But I think that a useful piece of information that might allow some of you to try and compartmentalize what a mindset shift is, is when you think about it in terms of uh, like an operating system that you have running inside of you, right? This operating system has a sort of routine kind of set of functions. And for a certain period of your life, it's efficient, it works. But then, like all operating systems, it needs to be updated to adapt to the new evolved environment that all of you are trying to navigate. So think about your mindset like it's an operating system and it needs to be updated. And sometimes when you do those updates, you got to change your workflow a little bit. Sometimes the computer that you do the updates on doesn't want to work like it once did. Maybe you got to upgrade your computer, right? Which can just speak about you. It's like upgrading yourself, you know, and that can really focus in on behavioral patterns. Maybe there's things you need to sacrifice from your life that don't serve you anymore, that are not going to work with that new operating system, that aren't going to work with that new mindset. What do we have for the third eye? Ace of Pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn energy at the third eye. There's a massive breakthrough like we've been picking up here for you, Sag. And as you can see, this Ace of Pentacles, there's a path, right? And there's those pinnacles there. They can represent the pinnacles of success, whatever that means for you. And it's like the divine is saying to you, hey, Sag, come down this path, okay? We have something for you. But they put down the pentacle, which could be the blessing, and they're showing you this scarab beetle, which represents a kind of rebirthing taking place. This can speak about what I said in regards to you upgrading your operating system. I just heard you're about to step into a new version of yourself. Now I'm hearing something about looking back on the time that you're in right now in the future and being able to see where there was a kind of crossover point. It's like you can't see it right now because, well, you can't see the forest for the trees. But to try and simplify what I'm saying here, Sag, I remember a very specific breakthrough that I had, uh, an awakening that I had in my life. And now when I look back at it, I can almost put it down to the day when my life completely shifted. But when I was in the throes of that, I didn't know what was going on. This is similar to what I'm getting here. It's like you're, okay, I just heard you're between worlds, okay? And it's this period of time that you're navigating right now, which you will look back on at some point in the future, and you will hold on to this sort of time, right? You'll always refer back to it as when you began to have your breakthroughs. And it's all based on this mindset shift, right? This upgrade that's taking place to... I just heard your spiritual operating system, right? It's like you're having upgrades take place from, okay, I'm hearing spiritual, mental, physical. You know, some of you could be feeling guided right now to implement some sort of physical activity or you just feel like you really want to start focusing on things that you maybe been putting off with your health. This is always a sign of some sort of transformation taking place. You may be feeling guided to change up your diet, remove some things, add some things. Some of you could be feeling guided to do a fast. There's just an overall sense that you're hungry for change. And this is a sign that everything I've been speaking about here in terms of these upgrades is taking place right now. You know, it's like you could wake up tomorrow and you're like, I want to get a gym membership or I want to go take a yoga class just out of nowhere. And you actually go and do it. You know, now's the time to really take advantage of that as well because it's suggesting that there's a supportive energy. So maybe in the past, in areas where you would have dragged your feet or you would have lost motivation, you find that you actually break through and you actually do it. And then this is further highlighting what you're leaving behind, right? It's like your soul is hungry for more now because you're leaving all this energy behind that wanted you to stay stuck and stagnated. So, of course, that energy wants to be replaced with something else. It's like, this is what you're leaving behind, right? Energetically speaking, 
And this is what you're stepping into. And the five of pentacles in the sun may as well be completely opposite energies. But this is exactly the spread we want to see here when it comes to this kind of breakthrough that you're having in your life, Sag. We're getting a very clear picture here. It's a very polarized energy. There's no gray areas here. And the Ace of Pentacles is also speaking about some sort of manifestation, right? Some sort of manifestation where you're going to be able to make some sort of real world impact in your reality. So this could be that thing, whatever it is. What do we have at the crown, please? Wow. <laughs> magician, Gemini, Virgo, energy at the crown. The sun, ace of pentacles, and magician. This is huge energy here, Sag. The magician is speaking about some sort of vision that you are about to manifest into your reality. And for a lot of you, this has something to do with your purpose. And it makes sense because you've been met with so much resistance trying to move in this direction. You know, what's interesting is I was speaking about in the 11th hour, something happens, right? It's like here you are moving forward, then in the 11th hour, right? Boom. The fish in your cup, fish water, right? Just muddying up the waters, dirtying up the waters. But now we're seeing that you actually break past this energy, sun, ace of pentacles, magician. You know, I really connect with this energy because I have been through this before. I cannot tell you how amazing it feels when you finally get this breakthrough after countless times of self-sabotaging. Again, year after year, decade after decade, depending on uh, how old you are or how long you've been on this particular journey for. It's like you're so used to not getting that breakthrough in a certain direction. And then when you get it, it's like you have to pinch yourself. It's like you have just witnessed a miracle take place in your life. And there's a lot of emotions that come along with this. Of course, you feel this overwhelming sense of joy and happiness. But a lot of the times, there's going to be some anger there as well. And that's a natural emotion to feel because when you have that breakthrough, like I was saying, you start to see pretty clearly what it was that was holding you back. And that in and of itself can be paradigm shifting, can really rock your world. What do we have at the foundation, please? The hangman, Pisces energy, Bifrons. So throughout the course of this reading, I've been speaking about perspective, right? Shifting your vantage point, universally speaking. And then we get the hangman, which would be the number one card that really speaks about perspective and letting go and seeing things from a higher vantage point. It's like you start to recognize where the restriction was always placed in your life. Exactly what I said when we were speaking on that magician at the crown. And then sure enough, we get the hangman here. You know, for a lot of you, this is going to be people, okay? I mean, right here, it's like, right? You, you see these people for who they really are now. It's like they can't wear this mask or cloak their energy anymore. And depending on the severity of the restriction you've been facing in your life, some of you are actually going to see that what you were experiencing was a kind of coordinated series of attacks to stop you from moving in a certain direction. I just heard a coordinated series of attacks that were implemented to keep you small, small, and I just heard small thinking, okay? This could really speak about, well, it does speak about this Five of Pentacles, right? Limited belief systems. It's like you thinking that you can't pull something off based on some sort of influential energy that you've had around you. Now, whether or not this energy is still around you or it's just a program that you are running. Now, this could be individuals that are still around you or were around you or it's a program that you've been running inside your operating system, right? Since you were little. 
most of us have dealt with this in some capacity. We're just set out on a particular path, and we entrust that the individuals who set us out on a path have our highest good in mind. But unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, this just isn't always the case. Or maybe those individuals have a kind of limited belief system as well that they've never addressed. You know, and we can go a layer deeper here because if that's the case, if it's something that they've projected onto you without even really knowing it, this is generational karma, right? When you're carrying the burdens of your forefathers, so to speak. So those limited belief systems, which can be seen as kinds of behavioral patterns, are passed on to you, right? You get to a point in your life in this modern day world we live in, and you're like, you know what? This does not work for me. Where did I pick this up from? This kind of way of approaching life. Boy, this is paradigm shifting when you go through this. I went through this. I sort of had this particular way that I was living my life and it was taught to me. And I just thought that, well, well, I thought that's how I'm supposed to live my life. But it just wasn't working. Uh, Year after year, I found myself further and further inside this hole that eventually I just wasn't able to get out of. Bad decision after bad decision. And yes, of course, you have to take responsibility for your own decisions at that point because you're an adult. But there's nothing wrong with tracing back your steps to find out the source of it. In fact, that is advisable because it can allow you to have a deeper understanding, a better understanding of what might have taken place there, which results in you being able to heal it. Okay? (sighs) And this is what I'm getting here, Sag. Now we're opening up the doors to generational karma. And I think that all of us are dealing with generational karma in some capacity, whether it's big or it's small, whether it's known or it's hidden from us. We're all constantly breaking patterns. That's just life, right? That's just evolution, right? We're constantly growing, figuring out better ways to do things. That will always be there. If it wasn't there, then there would be no point of life because life exists so we can break the patterns. That's what makes us useful. We're evolving energy. What do we have the sacral, please? Seven of Swords, Andromalius. Both of these cards, these individuals... Are completely stripped down, right? So there's this emphasis on you recognizing this. Now you're starting to see things clearly. It's like you're getting to the core of things. You're tracing your steps back, right? You're starting to see where the restriction originated from. Seven of Swords, this can be an energy of you really being honest with yourself and breaking free of some sort of patterns that you've been living in your life right underneath this Five of Pentacles. I mean, this energy right here is, this is, this is a really heavy energy six of cups in reverse followed by the five of pentacles this hangman here i read in its negative polarity so this is an energy that was basically trying to make you a victim to this generational karma quite possibly just keep you in the same stuck pattern that they've always been in you know i've never heard of a situation where individuals are trying to break out of these patterns in their life and they receive support from their family, so to speak. It just doesn't happen because usually people can't even really compartmentalize or compute what it is that we're even channeling through for you here, Sag. It's so far outside of the realm of how their mind even works. They cannot conceive this, right? So it's a path. It's a journey that you have to take on your own. Breaking the chains of generational karma is always a solo mission if the individuals that came before you weren't able to do it. So what makes you think that they can support you on your path to do it? You know, almost 100% of the time, if you even try and discuss this with people in your family that are still stuck in these patterns, they'll feel slighted by you. They'll feel like you think you're better than them. That's a pretty common one that people will say to individuals when they're going through an awakening in their life, oh, you think you're better than everybody now, huh? But all I can tell you is, Sag, is that you're going to have to learn how to shut this out, okay? Forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they do, right? This is a great saying because it can really speak about how they just don't see things from the perspective you do. You know, this can really be said about when you're raising your vibration, you're essentially 
bettering yourself, right? Bettering your circumstances and just your life in general. And you're growing past certain dynamics, certain people, ways of doing things. And you start to realize that really, you know what? Those people are living on a lower vibrational timeline, right? They don't really understand. And it's not to say that people are beneath you, but vibrationally, they just may be, all right? And Obviously, this isn't something that I would recommend verbalizing to anybody because that's not going to be met with anything useful. It's just something that you know and you need to move in a very peaceful manner that doesn't create more disruption on your path. Just move with the knowing that you are doing what the divine has willed for your life. And I feel for a lot of you, that is breaking the chains of some sort of generational karma. This generational karma that you are breaking free of is going to result in some sort of major breakthrough in your life. What do we have the solar plexus, please? <laughs> Unbelievable. Eight of Cups, Pisces Energy, VPAR at the solar plexus. Now, the Eight of Cups is following what I just said perfectly because it's all about moving on, right? It's like these people are living in the past. They refuse to grow. And you have to withdraw your energy. You cannot change them. That's a relationship that they have to create with the universe themselves. And no matter how much you try, Sag, you will not be effective in trying to get people to understand you or to see the light. So don't even waste your time. Again, that language, right, that you're speaking with the universe cannot be taught. It's like they have to find it from within themselves. And think about all the work you have put in to get to where you are and where you're going. That can't be taught, right? You're being divinely guided. Maybe that's not for them. This is also another sad truth that a lot of us have to come to terms with. Most, if not all of these people that you have to leave behind are NPCs, right? They're just a part of the matrix. They're just a part of the illusion. It took me a while to really come to terms with that one, but this really speaks about a movie I mention quite a lot, and it's a Truman Show. I've heard other readers mention it as well. It makes perfect sense because it really speaks about a world that's kind of built around you to keep you stuck in a kind of illusion, right? And then when you start to wake up, you start to see kind of glitches in that, and you start to see that they were kind of all in on it, that's what it feels like. This is what this kind of awakening feels like. You feel like the whole entire world was in on it. You're almost waiting for somebody to yell, cut, scene, right? And then you zoom out and there's like a stage and you're like on the middle of the stage, right? That's the best way I can put this, Sag. It's wild. It's well, it just completely shifts the way you perceive and think about reality. As you go further down your path, you start to realize that you're here for a much greater purpose than you can possibly begin to even conceive. Because why so much effort, right? So then you start to think about, okay, well, if that's the case, then it must mean that how I move is important. You start to realize that you're a part of a certain kind of mechanics, uh, universal mechanics that are at play, right? This really speaks about something I mention all the time in my readings, and that's about us being in different allocated positions as a means to create influence or domino effects in our life, right? It's like the universe needs us certain places because we have to fulfill some sort of mission. But rather than trying to constantly figure out what that is, you just want to make sure that you're moving right in the here and now, right? Like I said, Focus on the here and now, and the future will come with ease. What do we have at the heart? Oh, wow. Five of Cups, Scorpio Energy. Look what it says right here. Destruction of environment, right? So it goes back to what I said about, like, a glitch in the matrix. And whenever I get this guy... It's like he's looking kind of sad, right? Because he realizes that all his tricks that he was playing or, you know, the illusion that he was casting over your life no longer works anymore. Both of these cards speak about some sort of loss. It's like an energy of abandoning all hope, abandoning ship, right? This is the illumination here. All of this energy here. 
It's like things are being stripped right down to the core so you can see it. That is all the result of this. You breaking past that 11th hour. And then we have the Four of Cups, Cancer Energy, Healing Capacity. So now we're going into the outcome. So this is the resistance, right? And this is the support. And this bridges us from the resistance to the support. Now this Four of Cups is just speaking about an entirely new outlook. Just when you think that there was nothing really to look forward to in life, right? That everything was just kind of the way it is, the way it's always going to be, right? It's like an energy of feeling very apathetic towards life or just completely unfulfilled. It's like this whole new timeline opens up for you with endless possibilities. And again, I totally relate to this because before I had my awakening or my breakthroughs, I was just completely drained and bored with life. I just felt like no matter how I moved, it wouldn't make a difference. Like, what's the point to this? This is so incredibly meaningless. And ever since I had the breakthrough, I just feel the complete opposite. I see the point. There's an overwhelming amount of meaning that I feel every single day toward life. I get it, right? We're all agents of evolution. We all have a role that we need to play down here. And there's this force that wants us to relinquish that. I mean, look, if you want to completely simplify everything I'm saying here, it's like two forces at play, evolution and de-evolution, right? God, the devil, positive, negative, however you want to put this, okay? And we are all a part of it. And how we move in our everyday waking life determines what side of it we are on. And quite often when I talk about things like this, there'll be somebody who leaves a comment and they'll say, there is no duality. We are all one. I get it. I understand that. Universally, yes, the universe is all one. We are under one umbrella. But again, inside the three-dimensional density, there is a duality. It's very clear. You know, it's very important that we recognize that, right? Because we need to be honest with what it is we're dealing with as a means to win in life. And that's all any of us wants to do is just win, right? Just do what we came here to do. But I'm telling you, Sag, for you and the individuals that resonate with this reading, this is how you do it. This is a really basic blueprint, but it works. It's effective. It's tried and true. What do we have in the throat, please? Seven of, wow, seven of wands. Leo energy at the throat, right underneath that sun, also Leo energy. Riael, the expected God, liberation, deliverance from enemies, both visible and invisible. So the Seven of Wands is talking about you taking a stand, okay? It's you pushing forward in power, persevering. And it also speaks about what I said about this being a solo journey, right? It's just you and the divine, It's like you're going to war, spiritually speaking. You know, you can't take somebody with you. You got to go by yourself. And again, Sag, I'm telling you, once you break past that 11th hour, whatever that represents for you, right? You start to see all this very clearly. It's like it's all exposed to you. You start to see why you were always disadvantaged, why you were always discouraged to move down this path. You start to see why you gave up on yourself in that 11th hour. It's like this whole perfectly orchestrated plan is exposed to you, right? The glitch in the matrix. And that speaks about what it says right here. Deliverance from enemies, both visible and invisible. What was hidden from you? is made visible. You also start to understand, right, this dualistic nature that we all live in and that there's principalities at play here and that you are a spiritual being having a human experience, right? So when you think about it like that, you also start to realize that you have other spiritual beings that are supporting you as well as coming against you, right? The principalities. What do we have at the third eye? Wheel of, wow, Wheel of Fortune right underneath that Ace of Pentacles. 
Sag, this Wheel of Fortune is also your energy. Metatron, the recording angel. Advancement and progress teaches, guides, and records events in the Book of Life. So the Wheel of Fortune is not only speaking about this manifestation materializing into your everyday waking life, but it's also speaking about you stepping onto a new timeline. It's like a, a new kind of life cycle, a destiny kind of energy, a huge turning point, which is all the result of this exposure and this sense of, well, self-empowerment, right? To actually break through this energy. The Wheel of Fortune is also an energy of awakening, right? Which is clearly what we've been talking about here. And it's like you have been holding on to this big picture vision. Both of these cards speak about that. It's like you're manifesting some sort of vision, something you've been holding on to. And see, this Page of Cups is right at the heart. So a lot of you could literally have some sort of true heart's desire, some sort of vision, right, that you've always had for your life. I really think that a lot of us have this. You know, it can go all the way back to your childhood. Like you always felt like you were here for something bigger or for a very specific reason. And this is what this speaks about. That was implanted into you by the divine before you even came here. And this is what all of this speaks about. It's like all of a sudden you manifest that. It may not look exactly the way that you thought it would, but something here comes to full realization and manifestation based on something that you've always had inside you, right? But usually when this happens, it's better. And again, I can speak from experience because it's like I always had these true heart's desires and dreams. And then when I went through this initial awakening, the breakthrough happened for me and the way it happened for me was so much better than this thing that I always had inside my heart, right? In my dreams, right? We make plans, but God laughs. And usually that laugh is connected to something way better than what you were originally thinking, Sag, okay? The path may be a little different. The details might not be the same, but the end result will blow your mind. What do we have at the crown to close this out for Sag? Too many cards. What do we have with the crown? Too many cards. It's a lot of energy trying to come out here, Sag. What do we have with the crown, please? Oh. Ah. Perfect. Temperance. Sag, that is your energy. Chawokia, the god of joy. Reconciliation regains the favor of those one has offended. This is an energy of you aligning with your soul's mission, your higher self, and your highest good, Sag. This is also an energy of complete balance, an energy of purpose and meaning being brought into your life, which is a perfect way to end the spread because I was speaking about how some of you may be coming from a time in your life where you're like, what's the point of this? Like, what's the meaning behind this? Please show me a better way, right? And then all of a sudden, all of this comes through and you're like, oh my God, I didn't even know. I couldn't even have possibly imagined that all of this was waiting for me as a result of breaking free of this, right? It's like all of this is being kept from you. Look at this energy here. Unbelievable. And then look at this energy here. This is all resistance. But all of this is the result of you breaking free of these chaotic, disruptive energies that have been affecting your long-term vision for your life, Sag, right? What I was speaking about here. It's also you starting to kind of look at this situation like wow it feels like it was orchestrated like they all did that on purpose like they were all in on it again that's what it feels like waking up like you're in the truman show and look they may not see it that way they may not even know 
what they were doing because again they're just npcs right non-player characters they're just doing what they're being guided to do by whatever is driving them but in saying that what's driving them sag is not what is driving you okay and i'll just leave that one with you but hopefully i've channeled through something useful for you here sag i feel that there's a lot that you can sift through and you should be able to find some information to help support you on your path to assist you in this breakthrough. Sag, this is the message I have available to you, depending on where you are on this timeline, should you choose to accept. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you would like a personal reading, you can find all of my contact details in the description below this video. And thank you for your donation, Sag. Take care.